All right, so question number three of the January 2025 paper. Here we are. You've reached this far. How did you reach here? Because you realize that you need to lock in. Because you don't know anything in IT and you came here frantically because your mock exam is tomorrow. If that's you, leave a comment. I may just reply. I don't know. Don't. All right. The company decided to invite a team of computer programmers to develop an application design specifically to meet the software needs of the company. Mm. Oh, this is the question. That's 25 marks. So the first two questions could be 20 marks. And they will ask you theory and practical. And then in the, next, the last two questions are 25 marks each where they could ask you theory, practical, and programming or algorithms. So whenever they feel like it, they could just throw it in at any time. If they could in general purpose and special purpose software, all right, general um, does basic slash generic tasks um, and can be applied to most scenarios. Example, notepad, as general purpose. Special purpose um, has a specific task and focuses on doing that well. Example, I don't know, a scanner, scanning software. I mean, you can put anything I want with two marks, but they really want to check to see that general does basic or generic tasks and special does. All right, if you buy example, that's just um, sprinkling all salt on it and you just be like, yeah, cool, yeah, do that. And you're good. Um, explain the difference between customized and custom written software using an appropriate example. Okay, now they want you to, now they want you to, yeah. You see the amount of lines that they give you and they said explain. That means they want examples and you need to, you need to go hard. You need to go hard. All right, so let's go. Let's go. Customize. Customize software is usually um, off the shelf software that someone modifies to meet their particular needs. Example a spreadsheet that is customized to do specific accounting tasks using formulas. Okay, cool. That's one example there. Spreadsheets are the your go-to answer when it comes to customization. No problem. All right, so that's two marks in the bag there. All right, secure that bag. Then custom written now is software that has been developed using program code for a specific task. Example, using Python to write a program. Um, yeah, using Python to write a program for a NASA spaceship that is going to land on the moon. Hey, there I use all of the space because I yapped. I'll make this PL better. Some of you all are yappers and this is your time to shine. They give you all of these lines. Go hard. Right now, man. Right, right, right. Get those four marks. Secure the bag and move on. Generally speaking, I don't like to yap for questions, but some questions are yap questions. So keep talking. Keep yapping. The contract for application development services was emailed to the company for printing. State two ways in which a company could troubleshoot and resolve each of the following printing problems. What? Oh, sorry. My brain just happened to, like, get tired now. Remember, I told y'all I do the exam based on, like, how you. So, this is me. I'm actually, this is a video, but I actually just booking it in chronological order. So, I've been sitting down here for, I don't know, probably about 40 minutes so far. I get kind of bored when I do any questions, honestly. Unless it's a real nice question, but some of these questions they just kind of trip out. Alright, the contract for application development services was emailed to the company for printing. Stay two ways in which the company could troubleshoot and resolve each of the following. The document was sent to the printer but was not printed. Bro, what? If you send anything to the printer but you're not printed, check to see if the first of all the printer is on. Um check the cable connectivity. Don't put cable connectivity now. I'm gonna confuse people. Check if 
uh, the USB cable is plugged in. Huh? Yeah, sounds good. Check to see if the printer is on. Check to see if the cable is plugged. The USB cable is plugged in. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I think that is all. What else would stop the printer from printing? Yeah, okay. The document was not visible. Well, check to see if there's ink. Check to see if the ink cartridges are empty. And check for clogged up ink jets. Did this say it's not a dot metric? Uh, what type of printer it is? They didn't say what type of printer it is, you know. So we don't know if it's an inkjet printer. Check, check for clogged ink jets or toner. I don't know if it's toner, is it two ends or one ends, but we'll just leave that there for now. Did you really check your spelling? Pro tip, right? Uh, yeah. I'm good there. I read the following problem solving steps concerning the development of the application by inserting the numbers one to five in the order. Ooh, nice question. No, not nice question, because it's too marked. Why do they do this? I just get, I be like, ah, stop doing this. Where you give one, two, three, four, five things to write, and it's two marks. Like, ah. all right, center yourself. Center yourself. Or two marks. One more one is define the problem for sure. Two, propose and evaluate solutions. Three, determine the most possibly best solution. Four, develop the algorithm. Five, test and validate it. Now that's the answer. If you fumble any one of these questions, I don't know how much marks you're going to get. Like if you fumble one, that means you're going to have the two, two things out of place. If you have two things out of place, they'll probably take away one mark. If you fumble the next one, that means you're going to have another two things out of place, then you get zero marks. So you could have, you possibly could have one thing in place, but then everything else wrong, but you'll get zero marks. And, yeah. Ah, boy. Here is the algorithm question. This is the one that you usually stop and ask yourself, do I know what I think I know? Some students, when they see this and they start to read it, just be like, yo, what is going on here? There's a lot of words. Im push. But I'm going to show you how to get some marks for these. I'm going to show you how to get some marks for these. But, of course, if you're not too sure, I'm going through this question and you're telling yourself, wow, this is crazy, I don't understand any of this. 1-8-6-8-3-0-8-8-7-9-9. Crash course, classes, videos. And if you're like, you don't know I don't have any money, I can't pay for them things, there's a free app called Linnet. Download it. Everything that you need inside there. Okay, right, what was I saying? ABM Transportation Services was hired to transport students on a field trip. Write the pseudocode for the algorithm that prompts the user to enter. Okay, so first of all, we want to prompt the user to enter the number of students in attendance. Then display the message, contact the school if the number of students is less than 25. If the number of students is equal to 25, then display the message, all students are in attendance. If the number of students is greater than 25, display the message, trip invoice update required. All right, so there's a bunch of if statements and <laughs> nothing much yet. I mean, this, like, honestly, this question, very easy. There's like a form three algorithms question. So you should be like triggering, like, you know. If you have food, you must eat. So let's go. Algorithm transport. We are list all the variables. The variables we will list out are from the user for the number of students. So N is number of students in attendance. Then we start, friends, please enter the number of students, read N. Why did I put N? Why did I put it in brackets? Because it just looks nicer. You don't have to put it in brackets if you don't want to, if you don't want to. Uh, next, read N. Um, and then you want to say if, if N, less than 25 then we have to print a message contact the school else if it's not less than 25 that means it's greater than 25 every number is it then if this number of students is equal to 25 then display the message all students in attendance okay there is no else here but there's a bunch of ifs if n is equal to 25 then print all students in attendance and then upon next if which is if n is greater than 25 then print invoice update required trip update required yeah all right there is no else there is another way to do this if you want to but this is like stop all right that's it there 
There is another way that you could do this with the nested if version. This is the most straightforward way to do it. There's really nothing much here. If it's less than 25, then print this. If it's equal to 25, then print that. If it's greater than 25, you can print that. However, you could do um I'll put it on the side here. This is for the um, this is for the big brainers. Right? I don't usually do this, I keep another example. But there's somebody who probably did it like this, and you're saying to yourself, wait, did I do it correct? Right? It's yeah, uh, let's um you could say if n is greater than sorry if n is less than 25 then print um contact the school blah 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 all right um, that's it then you could say else if n is less than 25 then print yeah else if less than, less than 25 print um trip invoice update needed blah 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 else if it's not less than 25 or it's not greater than 25 then, it, then it's obviously equal to 25 so then else print all students blah 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 blah, blah. and then you end if here and then end if here all right this is the nested version this is also a solution to it and some of y'all may be able to work this out if you know how to work it out like this with the nested if version go right ahead you should get correct but this one here suffices for everything. Shouldn't be a problem with this. Um, yeah. What I didn't do, uh, I didn't put the end of feature on. So let's put end of. End of. And end of. All right, that's it marks there. All right. If you watch all of this and you're still, you're still in like utter shock. I really have much to tell you. Besides, or download the Learn It app. Because the Learn It app will have all of those things and more for all other subjects most other subjects all right the flow chart below has errors which need to be corrected say the corrections needed at the areas labeled a b and c there are problems with this question why do we have problems i'll tell you why a if you're printing a uh, um print statements go in parallelograms so it's supposed to be like this all right that's first one. B is um, data flows down into a decision. So this arrow there is supposed to be like that. And then C is a decision. A decision diamond should have two output to TWO. Yes. Um, yeah, that's the only problem. This one is the trickiest one here because we don't know why it's a yes slash no. But that's basically a knowledge of flowcharts. If your knowledge of flowcharts is good, well, Patsy is a little tricky. And it's also four marks. So that means one of these things here is going to be for two marks. I think this will be two mark one here. So you're probably going to get one mark for here, one for here, and two for there. To make up four marks. Yep, and that makes sense. Um, say the name of the construct using the flowchart. That is selection. Ah, uh, yeah, if you don't know that, that, that's a problem, but that's all right. All right, so this question here tested. Yeah, this is where students usually go to die when they ask the algorithm questions. So they ask the information about printers and stuff at the start, which was okay, no problem. Yeah, if there was a question to hurt people, this was the question that would hurt people because you have to write out a eight mark algorithm, which is what a bunch of statements and interpret a flowchart and write things about algorithms. Which is usually not the strongest skill for most students. But I have a whole playlist. I have a whole playlist that explains algorithms from start to finish totally free. You probably watched it already. In the Learn It app. Download that app. There are free playlists, free PDFs, answers. All of the PDFs that you see me working out here, the answers are inside there. Um, and you could look at the PDFs. You could go through the multiple choice answers. All sorts of different things inside our Learn It app. Because we have content for everything with respect to IT. And we have content for maths, ad maths, multiple choice answers, Spanish, different CXE subjects, and the library is building day by day. So download that Learn It app and should be okay. All right. Number four. Oh, wait. I have to stop now. Yeah. All right. I'll see you all in the next question.